I am sick of hearing people talk about how they don't like the colors of a specific camera brand. We all know what I'm talking about. So today I'm gonna to show you how to easily fix the colors of your footage, no matter what camera brand you shoot with. What is up people, Dunna here, and today is my 31st birthday. And for my birthday, the fine folks over at Adobe got me exactly what I had been asking for, updates to the Lumetri color panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. Seriously, I know this wasn't just for me, but it was exactly what I had been hoping for. The new 2019 update for Premiere Pro CC is out now and it has a ton of new awesome features, but my favorite by far is the selective color grading feature inside the Lumetri color panel. I've always loved how easily I could manipulate and alter the colors in the HSL panel in Adobe Lightroom and wished that I could have that same or at least a very similar workflow inside Premiere Pro. Well, happy birthday to me because it's finally here. So let's hop into Premiere Pro and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you're at all familiar with me or my channel, what you're about to see may be a little bit disturbing. This is video of me wearing a shirt that's not black. I put on this blue shirt and it'll all make sense in a second. So let's get into it. So this is straight out of my a6500 shot with the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4. And you can see that because it's got the famous Sony colors, it's got kind of this wash of like a greeny yellow. Now I shot this without any picture profile. This is straight out of camera and it's straight on the standard mode. No creative styles, no picture profiles, no nothing. Okay, so we're gonna get into the Lumetri color panel, which in my screen is on the right hand side, but if you don't have it, you can go to window and choose Lumetri color. And this new function that I wanna talk about is under the curves tab. Now we can see our normal RGB curve there as we always do, but if you click this little hue saturation curves, we've got five new little panels that we can play with. And this is where it gets really exciting. So let's talk about what each one of these things does and how you can use them. So first and foremost, each of these has a horizontal and a vertical axis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make points along the horizontal axis and then alter them by bringing them up or down on the vertical axis. So the first panel that we have is the hue versus saturation. So across the horizontal axis is going to be the hue that we choose and then up and down is going to be how much we saturate it or desaturate it. So for example, if I wanted to take my shirt, this blue shirt that I surprisingly enough wore and I wanted to desaturate it, I can make three points. You wanna make sure that you make more than one point because otherwise you're just gonna drag the whole line. And if I drag the middle one down, it's gonna desaturate that shirt. So now it's a gray shirt instead of a blue shirt. If I wanna go the other way, I can drag it up and make the blue more intense. But you wanna be careful with this because in some cases, if you're already dealing with a fairly saturated color, you can really overdo it. If you wanna snap any of these curves back to zero, just double click. And if you want to delete any of the little points that you make, you can just hold command and click it. On a PC, I think that'll be control, but PC people, leave a comment below. So that's the hue versus saturation. You pick the color, you choose the saturation. The next one is hue versus hue, and this is my personal favorite. So what we can do here is we can pick the color and then we can alter what color it is. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this later, but here's the basic idea. If I wanna take that blue shirt again, I'm gonna make those three points. And notice when I click on the point to start dragging it, it actually shows me another color spectrum. So I can take that blue and I can pull it all the way down until it's more of a red color, or I can push it up to it's a green color. So you can really start to mess with specific colors and change them. And also on all of these panels, there's a color picker. So if you're not sure exactly where that lands, whether it's a little bit more cyan or whether it's a little bit more blue, you can grab the color picker and click on the object that you wanna change the color of. It makes a little selection for you and now you can go in and change the color of that. So that's my favorite one, but let's keep going. The next one is Hue versus Luma. And what that's gonna do is adjust the brightness of specific colors. So again, let's grab our color picker and change Choose the shirt and then if I drag it up it's gonna make the shirt brighter if I drag it down it's gonna make the shirt darker now keep in mind that this is going to affect anything that has that same color so if you look very closely inside the guitar the sticker is actually also blue so when I adjust this it's being adjusted too so if you're wearing a blue shirt and there's a blue sky in the background it's going to affect both of them the next curve is the Luma versus saturation. You'll notice that there are no colors on the horizontal line. That's because what we're actually choosing isn't color, it's 
luminance. So on the right hand side are going to be our whites, our brightest parts. On our left hand side are going to be our blacks or our darkest parts. Where this is really handy is if you find that you have some kind of a color cast in either your shadows or your highlights or any kind of part that is specific to the brightness of the picture, you can actually either accentuate those colors or you can take them out. Most of this scene happens to be in the mid range, so we're gonna make a little point there. And then if I drag it up, you'll see that my skin tones especially are starting to get more saturated. If I drag it down, they're going to get desaturated. And the last curve that we have is the saturation versus saturation. So again, we have a white line, not a colored one. What we're looking at here from left to right is from the least saturated point to the most saturated point. So if we grab that picker again and choose something that looks like it has a decent amount of color to it, like this orange pot, it's gonna choose right there and we can make it either more saturated or we can desaturate it. And again, like I said, if you go too far, you start to really mess with things. So if you're finding that overall your picture is too saturated, maybe just whatever comes out of your camera, it really saturates it. You can kind of pick the most saturated parts and desaturate them a little bit or vice versa. If your picture is a little too flat, you can pick the least saturated parts and bring them up a little bit in saturation. So now the question is, how would I use this? And most importantly, how do I fix those colors? As you can see, there's kind of this yellowy green cast over the whole thing and that's because of the famous Sony colors. If you're interested in learning more about the colors that come out of cameras, I highly suggest going to watch Gerald Undone's video about it. He kind of demystifies the whole thing. And at one point he actually says that Sony's probably one of the most accurate ones although not the most pleasing. I'll leave a link in the description. So mostly where we're gonna hang out is going to be in the hue versus hue curve. This is my favorite because we can actually mess with the look of the colors. So unlike what I was doing before where I would make three points and drag the middle one, I'm actually just gonna click once and drag the whole line up ever so slightly. What you'll really notice out of this is it's going to take the oranges, which is skin tones and the guitar in the background and those pots in the background and it's gonna make them a little bit more red, but it's also gonna take the blues and make them a little bit more cyan. It's very subtle, but check this out. Before, after. So my face looks a little bit more pink and we don't wanna go too far with that, but I think we've got our blue better in the shirt. Before, after and I think I look a little bit more pleasing to the eye as far as my skin tone goes. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in and make a dot on the red, and I'm gonna pull that back. This is something that's popular amongst Canon cameras. They actually take the reds and make them a little bit more orange. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple of dots around the blue, and I'm gonna drag the blue up a little bit just to make it a little bit more cyan. So I'll show you before and after of the blue. So there it's a little bit darker, a little bit more blue. And there we've got a little bit more of the cyan. Now if I was to go extreme just to show you, you can see how like it's almost green at that point. So that's looking pretty good. So before you can see that yellowy green color cast and after. Skin tones are looking a little bit better. I feel like this orange dot that we have can go up just a little bit more, making it a little bit more red before after, before, after. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now at this point I would probably choose whether I wanted to make any specific saturation adjustments. So let's say we wanted to take that shirt and make it a little bit more saturated. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. Let's say we wanted to take my skin and make it a little bit more saturated. So I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. Oh, too much. Very subtle adjustments here. And then going to our hue versus luma, I think I wanna take my skin and brighten it up a little bit. This is a trick I like to do in Adobe Lightroom. So we're gonna take that skin tone, brighten it up. It just kinda of softens it out a little bit. Still the same color, just a little bit brighter. Now in the luma versus saturation curve, what I really like to do is actually take my shadows and just desaturate them a whole bunch. So I take this like fourth line here and then I make two dots and I just make like a, 
a low curve. And what that does is anything that's black, anything that's super dark, it's gonna make it true black with no color cast on it. I do wanna see if I can get this back wall feeling a little bit more white. So I'm gonna find my color picker on the hue versus saturation, click it. It's this kind of yellowy color and I'm gonna desaturate it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good without really affecting too much else. So if we were to turn off the entire curve, so all of those adjustments that we just made, turn them all off, we've got this. It's way more green than it even seems when you first see it. And then afterwards, we've got this. Much more pleasing colors. I really like the way that we've updated these skin tones and as well if you watch the guitar before and after, I feel like it's such a pleasing change. And as far as I can tell, it's a lot more similar to something like a Canon or a Fuji as far as color. But I promise you this was shot on a Sony. Now at this point, you could go in and do any other adjustments that you want or sometimes I like to do them before. And so we've got our before, super green, skin tones look bad, and after. Much more pleasing to look at. There are a lot of new other features going on in the new version of Adobe Premiere, but this has to be hands down my favorite one. And as always, I wanna turn this over to you. Let me know in the comments below, what's your new favorite feature? Do you love these new Lumetri adjustments? Leave a comment and let's start a conversation. If you had fun or if you learned something, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help tell YouTube to share the video around. If you wanna be friends, click the circle, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. If you wanna watch another video, there's one right here. I think you'll really like it and I'll see you next time.